My name is Emily and over the next eight weeks I'm going to be building this boat. These are the plans I was originally set up for the Eastport frame. A 57 page instruction booklet and 8 pages of plans including some drawings and some diagrams. That's how all the plywood was used. And all this lofting where I had to take all those measurements and uh, use a nail in all these places to draw them all out. So. Uh, a lot of work to create these. Also a lot of these plans there's multiple pieces on one sheet which makes it a little confusing to figure out where the half lines are uh, and to get all the marks straight. But it was doable and I got it done and it was successful for the most part. Now I've been sent correct plans for the Eastport nesting pram and these instructions are much, much longer. 109 pages. 50 pages more of instructions for the nesting pram. Gotta cut it in half, all this stuff that didn't have to be done with the original. So, thin little booklet. Very thick booklet. So, now we have the proper plans. Uh, let me show you this though. Again, we had those small plans with the Eastport pram. Here we have giant full size plans, including full size, back up here. These are full size planks. So instead of drawing all those tiny little lines and connecting them with dots and hoping your measurements are correct, you literally just trace the full size plans which is pretty darn cool. And they have uh, marks here for where you put all the uh, holes for when you wire it together. Boy, isn't that nice. And check out the use of plywood here. Quite efficient. Another difference between the two plans is the actual materials it takes to build the uh, boats. I didn't count on this, but the regular pram was three sheets of six millimeter and one sheet of nine millimeter plywood. But on the nesting pram, they want two sheets of six millimeter, one sheet of nine millimeter, and half a sheet of 18 millimeter, which I don't have. 18 millimeter would be three ply of the six millimeter plywood or two ply of the nine millimeter. I believe that's for the seats to make the seats nice and solid. We don't have that, and again, I could buy it, but I think we're going to um, piece together some of the other bits of plywood to reinforce. That means we're gonna have the laminate plywood, which means we're gonna need a little bit more epoxy, but I can live with that. Couple more differences. Look at this dagger board on the Eastport pram. Look at this dagger board on the nesting pram. Much longer dagger board here. Also, check out the seats. Curvy, really curvy, curvy on the regular Eastport pram. On the nesting pram, this actually curves the other way. And straight seat, straight seat. This seat has to be removable in the nesting pram because this comes out, goes in here, then this whole chunk goes in here like so. But we've already traced and cut out these big seats. No, not this one. I've cut out this one though and I've cut out this one. This is not a problem because I just have to cut it back if I want to or I can leave it. I'm thinking I'm actually gonna leave it because there's this bulkhead here and then I can seal this in and this can become flotation which is good because in this one they have you put foam underneath the seats and honestly 
I would rather not have foam, I would rather have an airspace and an inspection port so I can store stuff in there. That'd be great. So, the I will probably make a bigger front seat. Um, the middle seat will look a lot like this. And the back seat will probably be bigger too, instead of having two uh, holes and screws to hold it in, I'll probably have two, or four. So instead of these two, I'll have like one, two, three, four, and it'll look more like that. So it's going to be kind of a hybrid between the regular one and the nesting one. Probably means we're going to end up with a heavy boat, but I'm going to have storage, 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 slash flotation. And I kind of like the curves of this boat a little bit better than this one. This one looks kind of plain. I want my boat to look a little more fancy. So those are some of the differences between the two models. Um, and we're going to have something kind of in between. We don't have the right kind of plywood or enough plywood, but CLC sent us four pieces of plywood to use for the bulkheads and then we have everything we need for everything else. So, not too shabby, not too bad. Yeah, we can do this. Come along as we finish the Eastport-ish pram. The first thing to do is use the new wood CLC sent us to trace and cut out the bulkheads, as well as the doublers, which will give some extra thickness and support where the two boat halves connect. Since we're not following the exact plans for this dinghy anymore anyway, I'm thinking, why not get a little creative with the doubler, too? So, using some stock images and some inspiration from the sea, I came up with this design. It's going to be a lot more work, but with my recently honed jigsawing skills, I think I can pull it off. My friend Dana came by to visit and helped trace and cut the aft doubler which will be covered by the seat, while I worked on finishing the seascape for the forward part of the doubler. With the basic double out of the way, I spent the weekend finishing the complicated one. Here's the magic. Watch the little teeth go right into the plywood. Rather than using the bulky plastic knobs to connect the two halves, as specified in the CLC plans, Clark suggested that we use T-nuts and machine screws. It means we'll need to use a wrench to assemble and disassemble the boat, but I don't mind. It's going to give us a much cleaner look, and my seascape art will pop. There's the pattern that came in the kit. And this... Here's the pattern I made.
I am very happy with it. I'm really paranoid about epoxy now because the epoxy I used to put the skids and the skig on and coat all the sailing parts is still tacky after like 48 hours. So I mixed it wrong or I measured it wrong, something, and I have to redo it. So I have to sand down all the parts, I have to dig out, scrape out, sand out the fillets and the skeg and the skids, which is not going to be fun. Luckily it's on the bottom, so I'll be able to cover it up whatever damage I do doing that. But now I just did unthickened epoxy on the two bulkheads, both doublers, and then I used thickened epoxy to glue them together. And I'm just sitting here saying, I hope I mixed it right. I hope I measured it right. I hope I mixed it long enough. I mixed it for like almost three minutes. This slow hardener is really, I mean, it's nice because you got a lot of time to work with it, but also um, you don't know if it's not working or if you mixed it wrong and wait and come back and check it. So I don't really like that. I would much rather it be getting hot in the cup and you know, being under a time crunch to use it and know that it's going to get hard than to deal with this, which is having to undo a bunch of stuff and redo a bunch of stuff. <sighs> but I should be happy right now. We're at like three weeks, probably like a hundred hours. But I was able to do a kick-ass doubler. I am really good at using a jigsaw now. I'm like, my mermaid has fingers. Like, how cool is that? I don't think... A month ago, I would have been able to do the jigsaw that well. So I really honed my jigsawing skills. Now I just have to get my epoxy skills. And you can see, well, I don't know if you can see it with the camera, but it's definitely, definitely able to flex this fillet. You can kind of hear it's kind of rubbery. I mean, I can just, yeah, it's not hard at all. It's not going to harden up like this stuff up here. So that's what it should be. This is... That's what it is. So, got to peel out all that. Got to peel out all this. Because this is gummy too. Scrape it out. Sand it. Start all over. Not only is this dagger board and the other sailing pieces um, still tacky because I mixed the epoxy wrong, so I'm gonna have to sand it down and put another coat of unthickened epoxy on it. But it's too wide this way. The dagger board fits in it, but it doesn't fit tightly in it. So I made up this shim with some nine millimeter plywood. I'm gonna epoxy that really well, and that's gonna go here. Then we're gonna be able to trim this down. Actually, it's gonna make our seat maybe an inch narrower which gives us more leg room and uh, more room to sit on the floor when I'm sailing. So easy fix but frustrating because it's something I didn't really anticipate having to do. So I should have measured more correctly the first time. So the dagger board. So another lesson learned. Today is September 29th, it's about 10 o'clock in the morning, and we've been away from the boat, this boat, at uh, the big boat, since Thursday, I think. Anyway, it's been a few days. Um, if you recall from my last check-in, uh, I, I mixed some epoxy incorrectly. Uh, this skeg and these skibs were put in with a batch of epoxy that didn't quite dry. It was still tacky, it was still kind of gummy. Uh, when we left, I was going to strip it out and redo it, but I didn't have time before we went back to Temptress, so I left it. And it turns out, it has hardened up quite a bit. Uh, it's a little rubbery on one of them, but I think it's going to be okay, especially since we're putting some really hard bottom paint on the bottom here. Um, also, Clark was doing a fiberglass project yesterday and had some extra thickened epoxy, so he went over uh, this fillet here 
on the skid again, and it's really, really solid now. So, um, so the skid looks good. I think I'm gonna embrace this. It's imperfect, but uh, structurally it's solid, and I think we can make it work. These are gonna be pretty cool. I've got some inspection ports. Uh, one of them's gonna go in the forward bulkhead there, down there. So there'll be flotation airspace in there, but I can also store stuff in it. Um, this whole middle section, this is where the dagger board trunk goes. I'm gonna have probably one inspection port on either side. So I'll have two compartments for lunch or snorkel or whatever else I need. And then, haven't decided on the back. Let's see, this is just set in here. I think there's room for some flotation in here and still allow space for the front part to nest in the back part. But the seat has to be able to come up, get stored in the front part, and then the whole thing gets stored in the back. So there's kind of like two cutouts in this back corner that might be able to be like permanent foam. Might be able to be permanent foam. So we'll have flotation, 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 which is handy because the boat might flip over. I think I might install the seat like right up to the back and then in order to let water out, I might cut a couple more of those little fish here in the corners so I have drain holes. I think that could be fun. Might cut a another little thing here or put something on, a little starfish or something. I don't want to be tacky, but I think it'd be cool to have the theme continue throughout the boat. By the way, this piece right here is just junk. It's just holding the boat uh, apart right now until we get these bulkheads in. And this cardboard goes between the bulkheads, so we have something to saw through when we saw the boat in half. happy with how this is turning out. There's a couple areas where I over sanded earlier um, so I haven't taken all the epoxy off. It's a little bit of color variation but because it's sea life and it's organic I think a little bit of color variation will be okay. These parts here definitely over sanded down to the next ply but those will get covered by fillet. Um, it's not perfect but heck I did the whole thing with a drill and a jigsaw. I'm pretty impressed with myself. already. I made myself two little measuring cups, one for resin, one for hardener, so I can reuse them. I don't have this, this anxiety about whether it's going to cure or not, because this is slow hardener. It's got a longer hot life, which makes me nervous when I'm working with epoxy and 30 minutes later it's still not hard. I can't see it. I'm going by you. It's your, your show today. Welcome to the Emily Show. All failures belong to Emily. All the successes belong to Emily. Mm-hmm. I don't think so. I'm successful because Clark corrects my mistakes. Behind every great woman is a great man single. Wait, don't do that. Hold on. You're going to ruin it. Sometimes. Okay. So, should I slather it on or put it on? 
put you wanted to put on the boat. I think you should put it on the boat to start with, along the bottom line between the tapes. But don't go up the sides too far. Go up like to, but don't go where it's vertical. Yeah. And then we put it on the piece where it's vertical. Okay. And really, we're happy if we get a spot well at this point. And okay. If it locks in, and then we fill it in. And what we don't get on the inside, don't sweat, because when we cut it in half, we get access to that. True. Sure. That's peanut butter. Can be hungry. Or hummus. Yeah, it's kind of hummusy. Change to the boat since we stitched all the panels on.